KTT v1.04 has just been released, and this version contains two new nodes, those being the KTT crevasses node and the KTT dunes v2 node, which is an update to the old KTT dunes node. We're going to start by going over the KTT crevasses node, and I'm going to load the handbook here because the handbook contains an example node graph for this. So I'm going to go to the simulations tab here in the nodes folder and open this crevasses folder right here, and then click the create crevasses example node. And we'll see this creates a snowy terrain, and I'm gonna add in a uh, light map node, the path trace light map, and I'm gonna connect that. This will just make it be a little bit easier to see. So we can see that we have a snowy mountain and the crevasses node adds this uh, sort of these deep little grooves in the terrain um, that will simu simulate sort of how snow and, and such fractures as it um, moves like in glaciers and whatnot. Uh, and I think this is best demonstrated by increasing the resolution. So I'm gonna turn the grid spacing down to 0.25 this will give us a um, grid resolution of uh, 4096 by 4096. And we can see how these cracks are now quite a bit more refined. So how do you set this up from scratch? So I'm just going to delete all of this. I'm gonna create a um, just regular height field. And I'm gonna add a uh, crevasses node. Make sure you're previewing this. So when we add this, we will see that we have kind of this weird um, sort of holes in the terrain. And this is just because the crevasses node doesn't know which direction to generate the crevasses in because they're cracks and they're therefore like aligned sort of to the terrain um, by default. And you can, in the sourcing tab, you can create, uh, you can change that. Right now, this is just using the gradient of the input, which is essentially just the direction of the slope. So we need to add in a height field noise or something similar. Um, and this will just basically give the uh, crevasses node a little bit of um, information to work with. And I'm gonna turn the amplitude here down quite a bit. And now when we see this, we have these uh, sort of cracks that are generating. Uh, and you can see that they're kind of following the structure of the terrain. So they're kind of forming around like uh, these little um, blobs, uh, little hills, right? And we can change this direction um, by changing this orthogonal amount parameter right here. I'm gonna set the grid spacing a little bit higher. Um, and basically what this will do, if we raise it, it'll generate them sort of um, wrapping around the slope, if you can see this. Um, and if we turn this all the way down, we can see that we have a lot more these, like they're sort of going up and down the slope, right? And you can have any uh, um, value in between zero and one, uh, and that'll just create a different look for it. Uh, and then we can also change how many of these there are. So more of these will make this like super, super cracked. Uh, and then less of these will um, create less and less crevasses. This also naturally generates branching crevasses, which means that these larger crevasses will generate smaller crevasses off of them. Uh, and this is quite useful for just create, like breaking up the shape a little bit. And you can change some parameters in, in here, like for instance, how many of these branches to generate and how large they are. Uh, and this branching can be really useful for using this node as sort of like a um, uh, texture, applying like a texture to the terrain. So to do that, I'm going to change this depth way down. So if I change this up, you can see they're getting really big. If I change this down, they're just really, really small. Um, if I turn the branching amount up a little bit and the branching scale, we can see that we get these 
um, patches of uh, like these little, little sub cracks that we can see here. And this creates a really interesting texture uh, that you can use in a lot of places. It's kind of almost like rocky, but very striated, if that's the word. I don't know if that's the word. Um, but it is pretty cool and it can be quite useful. And then this wall angle um, is basically the angle like of the slopes on, on these cracks. So if you you can use that to like soften these a bit if you if you need. And this node is very fast. So this is a 4K terrain and it's updating close to real time. It takes like half a second or so. Um, so hopefully that will be appreciated. Um, I'm going to turn the amount of these up a little bit. And turn the depth down a little bit just to soften the effect a little bit. And you can see that this is... Um, created almost like a leathery effect to the terrain. If I change this depth all the way up, um, it's pretty fun. Uh, you can also see that this is another interesting effect. Um, and this also comes with uh, some masking controls. So if I use something like the draw mask, and I draw on a region of terrain, it's gonna be a little slow because I'm operating at higher resolution. And I plug that in here. And importantly, I have to check this checkbox to use the mask. Uh, we can see that the crevasses are only generating in this uh, one specific region. Now, I use the term generating um, because they are sort of sourced from uh, they're like sourced from particles on the terrain. Almost, you can think about. So they do expand a little bit past this um, boundary, but the cracks are only generating. In that boundary they're just expanding out of it so you get a very natural fall off at the edges here um, now if you need these to be um, explicitly confined to one region uh, you can use the ktt combine node and i'm going to hook that up right here oh, sorry i'm going to hook that up right like this i got that wrong um, then just setting this mode to blend. Uh, let me turn off the mask here. Uh, and then um, blending this uh, with the, uh, using the, the mask from this draw mask, you can uh, confine these very precisely to the mask region that you want. Uh, but I generally prefer to uh, use this type of mask here because I, I think that this is just a much more interesting uh, way of um, dealing with the uh, fall off. So this was a node that I used quite recently in, and I actually sort of made it for that ex explicit purpose in the um, Mount Everest render that I did, um, that I posted around, and you can very clearly see how they were integrated into the terrain. These were crucial for um, creating that deep snow look. Um, now I'm going to not cover every single one of these parameters, but you can, you do have a lot of flexibility. Um, for instance, direction persistence makes them like a lot straighter. They don't follow the um, terrain as much. Uh, and then like the jitter and all that other stuff uh, is very cool. And then also the feature size you can use to like make these smaller or bigger, uh, depending on what you need. Um, but I do want to get into the dunes node um, because the dunes node, uh, it's a little bit uh, shaky right now with regards to like stability and stuff because it's very new. Um, the crevasses node, quite stable. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, but I did want to include it in this release because it is quite, quite interesting. So this dunes node is using an updated, uh, a different model for simulating the dunes. Um, basically this, what that means is that the, um, or the, the effect of that is that these dunes are now generated. Uh, they can now be 
generated in much more realistic ways and they can simulate much more complex shapes that uh, you'll naturally see in many um, dune structures like on earth or on other planets um, so I'm going to turn the talus angle up here a little bit uh, and I'm going to turn the bedrock depth down and you're going to start to see um, the what's happening is we get these little arc shapes over here and we can start to see these things called barchans forming and barchan dunes are pretty interesting they're basically dunes where you have like a lot of wind uh, and that wind is um blowing quite well yes blowing quite strongly and you create like these sort of horseshoe shapes for the dunes and they're quite they're quite cool to look at um and this is something that this node can simulate quite well um but previous uh the, the previous dune solver uh wasn't that good at um and yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty neat um this also uh it is a little bit grainier um but the uh like surface details of the dunes are pretty nice and i'll show you some higher resolution versions of them um in a little bit but I do just want to um, play around with this for a little bit, just so you can see sort of what um, this can look like, what this can do. So by changing the feature size, you can, of course, uh, change sort of the uh, scale of the dunes. And you, as a general rule, you'll get more like bar transforming when you have less sand and higher wind. You can see right there. Um, you can also change the direction of the wind, of course. Uh, and in this new version, you can attach a vector field uh, to this wind. And what that'll do is that'll uh, allow you to set a custom direction at any point in the simulation um, for that for that wind and custom strength as, as well. Uh, and that can be quite useful for uh, uh, just creating more specific shapes in certain areas. And then you can, of course, um, set masks for like the, the bedrock, um, which I'm going to do again via the draw mask. So going in here and just drawing a mask right here. And I'm going to blur this a little bit. So that's a little bit softer. And then when we check the bedrock mask right here, uh, we can see it's a little bit difficult to, because these dunes are traveling like a long distance, um, but we can see uh, how this is uh, affecting our, uh, how our dunes are spawning. So they're kind of spawning in this clump and they're trailing off uh, as the, uh, wind pulls them away. You can see we have a lot of uh, these cool little bar chans forming right here. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I, I am, or why I said earlier that this node was a little bit unstable. Um, not that it will cause any crashes or anything. I haven't had any crashes. Um, but the way that the sort of sand leaves the balance of the simulation and how it reappears on the other side. Um, and, and just the fact that it's a little bit unstable um, with regard to um, determinism. Um, this known more than most others uh, will sort of shift around the positions of the dunes a little bit more. Um, this is just due to the nature of the simulation being a little bit chaotic. Um, there's not much I can do about that specific thing, I don't think, but I will work on it a little bit more to see how good I can get it. Um, but that might be just something that we have to live with. Um, but yeah, this does, this is quite useful, um, for a number of different things. Uh, and I'm quite happy that this is now a part of the tool set as does unlock some, uh, new terrain features, uh, that were previously not really accessible. So I'm going to change the grid spacing down to 0.25 and let's see how it looks. Awesome. 
So we've seen this form, like like this little sand bank over here, and then the dunes falling off that. Um, and it's pretty, pretty cool. I like uh, how these uh, bar chains are forming over here. They're pretty sweet. Um, all this stuff before was not really accessible um, because the uh, older dune model it did create some nice little surface details, but it what just wasn't uh, good at simulating these structures. Um, another thing I'm going to turn up is this wind randomness. Um, basically, our wind is a little bit too precise, so we're getting these really straight trails um, and like really long like tails of the. Uh, let me go back. The really long tails of the uh, dunes, as you can see right here, they're just really straight, really long, uh, and that's just not super. Uh, Realistic, generally there's a little bit of chaos in the wind, um, and this definitely breaks it up a little bit. This is a little bit better. Um, and yeah, uh, I am excited to see what you guys uh, are interested in. Or, yeah, I'm excited to see how you guys um, use this these new nodes uh, in your projects. Uh, if you want to share your projects, we have a Discord server in the link in the description description below and you can also pick up uh, KTT from that link um, yeah from the link in the description below and I really hope you enjoyed um, I hope these new nodes are useful to you in your projects and thank you very much for watching bye bye